Hey guys, it's Elena. This month's Create with Intuition prompt is transformation, which is a powerful concept that can be found in both nature and in our personal journeys. As we move into May, nature is blooming and transforming around us. So to help you explore the concept of transformation through your art, I have put together five questions to spark your creativity. How have you personally experienced transformation in your life? Try channeling those experiences and those emotions into your artwork to create a piece that resonates with your personal journey. Can you think of a story or a myth that involves transformation? Use it as inspiration for your artwork, capturing the essence of that story through your own unique lens. Have you experienced evolution and transformation as an artist? Reflect on your artistic growth and consider how you can express your journey through your current piece. What emotions and feelings do you associate with transformation? Explore those emotions through your artwork and use them to guide your creative intuitive process. And finally, how can you capture nature's seasonal changes in your artwork? Consider depicting shifting colors, patterns, and textures that reflect the cycle of life and renewal. The visual cue for this month is flowers, and as usual, I have curated a collection of beautiful flower images from Unsplash to help inspire your creations. And you can find the link to that in the description. And going into my interpretation of these prompts, as always, yours might be completely different, but I just wanted to take you along with my process where I'm going to be using three different brush sets. It's my painterly brush set, my pressed flowers, and my greenery brush set. You are, of course, welcome to choose any brushes that you have or want to use to interpret the prompts in your own way. So let's go ahead and jump right into my interpretation. So I've got my Create with Intuition art journal open. These are my previous month's artworks that I made from the other art prompts. I like to keep it all in the same journal. And I had a video actually last week explaining how I made this. If you're interested in that, I'll put the link in the description. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make another page. And this page is going to be for May 2023. I'm not going to name my layers just yet because I'm going to make a group eventually like these other groups. So I put some thought into the different prompt questions and I was especially wanting to focus on the transition from winter to spring. And with that in mind, let's have a look at the collection of flower images on Unsplash. So I'm just going to swipe up, get my Unsplash app and put that over to the side. And let's just have a look at these different images here. So I really love flowers and these are all just like really fun and exciting to me. But out of all of these photos, this one, this is the one that's really calling to me. And it's calling to me especially because we have the cloudy sky up here and then we have the beautiful colorful flowers. And so it is signifying that transition to me of the cloudy dark winter into the spring. So I want to make a color palette out of this. So I'm just going to grab that and then Put it up here in my palettes and you have to do this from gallery view it doesn't work drag it up there so with that in mind i'm probably just going to close this now that i have these colors and i have this concept in mind with the lupines and the blur effects and the cloudy sky i'm just going to go ahead and close that and now we've got our palette here so first of all in my background layer i wanted to go with my painterly brush set i'm going to be switching around to a couple different brush sets for this but for the background i really wanted to do kind of a painty looking background. So I'm choosing my flat gesso brush and I just wanted to kind of fill the page with some gray white sort of colors. I did also want a little bit of pink in that. I'm going to add some pink marks in the back here and just like make that as big as I can. Add a little bit of pink and some gray. Maybe a bit more over here. And some of this. Just start kind of filling in the background colors here. I'm just going to go with that really light off white color and sort of drag all this around. And I see now that's kind of pink, actually. So this pink that we put in at the beginning, it's just kind of getting blended in. I just kind of wanted to have that as like an underpainting kind of thing.
So I'm just kind of transitioning back and forth from different colors and just kind of scribbling basically. But I took that off white here and I'm just going to make it a bit less pink. I'm basically just softening my edges. And that is really green. So just keep, I keep messing around with the sliders here to get some different versions of off-white just to kind of mix a lot of different colors in here. And just wanted to make it kind of look like a cloudy sky. And I'm not really thinking too much about the bottom half because I'm going to fill that with flowers. I just want more gray over here. I'm using really light, really light touch when I'm going like this, so it's not really adding as much as I was doing before. And just to finish off that background, I'm going to switch to the super dry brush, also on the painterly brush set, and going to my disc, I'm double tapping by the white to make it pure white. And with a very, very light touch, I'm just going to kind of brush this across so that we have a little bit of texture. Still kind of going with these back and forth motions. So just kind of softening these colors up here a little bit. I'm really enjoying how we've got a lot of different shades of gray in here with this pink as well. Okay, so now we've got the background layer in. I'm going to add a new layer and go ahead and select both of those and group it. Now that we've got our group, I'm just going to rename that to May 2023. So we've got our background layer and then this layer is going to be flowers. So now I'm going to switch brush sets. So I have been working with my painterly brush set and all the links for all these are in the description, of course, as always. And I do want to encourage you to just use whatever brushes you have or whatever you want to use to explore this concept. So this is just my interpretation as always, but I'm switching now to my build a flower brush set. And there is one in particular that I wanted to use. This one here, forget me not to. This one I feel like looks a lot like lupines. It's not lupines, obviously it's forget me nots, but I I wanted to use this to kind of make these long strands of flowers basically kind of like lupines so this takes two colors and i wanted to switch up the colors a little bit but first off i'm going to go with a dark purple and then switching to the secondary color i'll just choose a light pink so let's see how that looks with those two colors and i just want to bring up some flowers from this bottom right corner so I don't want to have it all the way across like it was in, in the photo. I kind of want to focus it more like on the side. So I think that is okay, but I'm actually interested in making these colors a bit more vibrant. So I've got that pink selected and I'm going to the value tab and I'm just going to take the S, which stands for saturation, up so that we have a more vibrant pink. Now switching back to my purple. This is already pretty saturated, but I'm going to bring it up just ever so slightly as well. Let's see how that looks. I think that that's a good color combo. And I'm using more pressure in the middle of the stroke so that we have a smaller at the top. And I'm just gonna kind of do that a few times in this color combo. Okay, so now I would like to incorporate some blue. So instead of the purple, I'm switching to this blue. And again, on the value tab, moving the saturation up just because I want to get as much as I can out of that color. And then on the secondary color for that, let's go with a bit of a beige and see how that looks. 
thinking I'd rather actually have pink with the blue. So let's go with this and then move it, the sliders a little bit. So it's just a bit of more of a deeper pink. And let's see how that looks. I'm still not happy with that pink. I think I'm gonna just try this light purple instead. I think that's working. So now I'm just kind of trying to make this uneven because I noticed it was all kind of the same length. So I'm just adding a bit more unevenness to it. So now at this point, I want to experiment with some blurring effects. So I'm just going back to my flower layer and I'm swiping right on that and duplicating it. So now we have two of the same layer and I'm just going to rename that foreground. Okay, so on that foreground layer, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And it's okay that it looks the same and it's kind of cut off a little bit funny because we're going to now go to the magic wand and Gaussian blur and just blur that a little bit. So I think that is about right. We're at about 9%, maybe a little bit more, about 10. So turn that off. I'm just going to reposition it a little bit here. And I'm actually going to turn the opacity down. So going to my foreground layer and hitting that end, I'm just bringing the opacity down so that it's a little bit more see-through. You can see that happening here. I'm just going to bring it up again, about 75%. And now I want to go back to the main flower layer and duplicate that again. And then go to the one behind it, and that's going to be the background flowers. And then I'm just going to make that a bit bigger. And then do the same thing, magic wand, gosh, and blur. Blur that background layer and then I'm changing the opacity of that to be a little bit. I'm going to put that at about 50%. I don't want that one showing up quite as much as the front layer. Actually, I feel like I actually need more. So I'm just going to duplicate that blurred layer and then flip it and rotate so that we've just got a little bit of a different pattern going on and it's not an exact copy of the flowers. And I feel like I need a little bit of greenery in this. So I'm going back to the flowers layer and adding a layer above that, which will be my greenery layer. And again, I'm going to switch brush sets. So I'm going to switch to my greenery brush set and I wanted to add some ferns. So these are the ground cover brushes here and I could do grasses as well, but I think I'm just going to go with the ferns. Let's try fern number five. Let's get one of these greens, maybe that one, just see where this takes us. I think I'd rather go with one of the other ones. Let's see how it looks with fern number nine. I kind of like how that's looking, but actually let's put it behind the flowers so that the flowers are showing a bit more here. So with the concept of transition from one thing to another, I really wanted this transition to be kind of gradual. So I wanted to go back to the background layer and the painterly brush set and then add a few more transitional colors around this now that we've got our flowers established. So I'm going to go back to that pink and the flat gesso. And then see if we can add a bit more of this in here. And then maybe some of the super dry. So that is my version of the transition concept. I'm not sure how I feel about it, to be honest. It's something new for me, this blur effect. But anyway, I just wanted to go ahead and share. I feel like it's important to share the process. I think that this Create With Intuition series is just all about trusting the process, even if it's not exactly what you had planned, or even if you have no plan and you're just following the prompts as you go. So anyway, I'd love to see what you have come up with. And thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.